friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and I have a question for you. Why did the owl become a comedian? Because he was a real hoot. Oh. Yes. No. Oh. Okay. If you're watching this when it goes live, it is the second weekend of February, which is the weekend every year where we all celebrate one of my favorite feathery reptiles. That's right. Today we are talking about the superb owl. What are you talking about? Owls. The the eleventh is superb owl Sunday. It's like a pretty big deal. Everyone's talking about it. Superb owl. Do you do you mean Super Bowl? Super Bowl Sunday. I guess if you mispronounce it and are really into cereal, but like we know that the only thing people are really talking about this weekend is owls. I I don't know what to, it's the Super Bowl. You know, football. Uh. Football. That's the ball with the the pointies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, this is no not football. Owls. It is so obviously all about owls. I mean. Why else would people be ordering wings in such large quantities, if not owls? Okay, you know what? Mom can help you with this one. I'm done. Alright, bye. Okay, apparently I'm filming with you. What are we filming today? Uh, owls. Oh, I love owls! Right? Yeah! Goodness. Okay, owls are awesome. Ooh. They're iconic, haunting, called Ooh. noble demeanor, incredible adaptations, and cryptic behavior makes them both mysterious and deadly. Today we will be talking all about some amazing owl facts that you might not know. But first, just to get this out of the way up front, in case some of you might be confused by me referring to owls as one of my favorite reptiles in the intro. I think most folks who are into reptiles know this already, but just in case. Owls are birds, which are totally real by the way, and birds are reptiles, like my friend Pete, but obviously they're not lizards, they are a different type of reptile. Birds, the last descendants of dinosaurs. From what I understand, animal classification is still largely taught in school as mammals, fish, invertebrates, reptiles and amphibians, and avians. But more modern phylogeny has actually classified birds as reptiles for decades. For some reason, it just has not really trickled down into the common knowledge, and the old, out-of-date classification has stubbornly stuck on it kind of like the notion that different parts of the tongue are responsible for different tastes or that we have five senses. It's wrong, but doesn't really matter too much to most people's day-to-day -day lives for there to be any real reason to challenge it, you know? So that's out of the way. Back to awesome owl facts. Okay, first up, let's talk about the eyes. You probably know that most owls are nocturnal, but they can and do sometimes hunt during the day. In fact, there are even some species of owl that are diurnal, like the little owl and the short-eared owl, both found in the UK where my friend Josh from Josh's Exquisite Serpents is from, but generally most owls do most of their hunting at night. And to do this, they need exceptional night vision. Owls have binocular vision with both eyes pointing straight ahead. By each eye having a slightly different perspective, they can better judge distances and stuff's relative position to themselves. This should be pretty familiar. This is how you and I see too, after all. Oh, by the way, quick fun fact, your nose? Yeah, did you know that you always see your nose, but your brain just filters it out? It tells you it isn't there? How weird is that? Owls see the same way we do, but their eyes are far more adapted to seeing in near darkness. Not total darkness, they do need some light to see, but so little that you and I would be probably completely blind. They accomplish this by having a huge number of light sensing rod cells, like a million per square millimeter packed into eyes that are so big that there is no room in their eye sockets for muscles that, you know, would allow the eyes to move. So they don't. Their eyes are fixed in their skull, and the only way an owl can look from side to side is to swivel their heads. 
luckily for them. Their flexible neck lets them do this up to 270 degrees in either direction. They also, like all birds of prey, have three eyelids. Well, six, I suppose, assuming that they do have both of their eyes. A top lid, a bottom lid, and a third transparent membrane, which can move sideways to cover the eye at an incredible speed. This prevents damage to the eye when the owl is taking down prey and feeding young. Who knew? You're welcome. Thank you. Next up, let's talk about how smart owls are. Birds boast some really brainy specimens. Corvids like crows, ravens, or jays, and citizens like parrots, macaws, and cockatoos are among the smartest animals on the planet. And above them all is the wise old owl, right? Long held up as a beacon of wisdom and intelligence. This connection can be traced back to ancient Greek mythology, with the owl being the symbol of Athena the goddess of wisdom, reason, and war. Wisdom, reason, and war? <laughs> One of these things is not like the other, but okay. So obviously the owl must have some serious brain power to earn such a prestigious place as the representation and embodiment of intelligence. Yeah, not so much. Owls are actually pretty dim as far as birds of prey go. They aren't paint chip eating dumb, but birds of prey in general are quite smart. Relative to them, well, when it was raining brains, owls had an umbrella. You know, you see, those big eyes not only take up too much room to have eye muscles, they also occupy a bunch of real estate inside of the skull that could have been used for a bigger brain. Compared to hawks, eagles, falcons, or ospreys, owls just don't really stack up. But they do have a surprising favorite subject in school. Ready for this? Owlgebra. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. Fine. That's, that's fine. Look, you can't have it all. Evolution often needs to let something go in order to get what is needed. Owls dumped a bunch of skill points into huge eyes and the ability to see in the dark at the expense of having a good thinky goo ball. And this is probably why, no matter how many times you tell them who let the dogs out, owls will still always say, who, 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 who. I hate that song, that was so painful. <laughs> You did great. <laughs> so if owls are out of their depth in a parking lot puddle, how do they actually manage to outwit clever prey that are pretty invested in not getting eaten? Well, it helps to have an adaptable diet. They're not picky eaters. Depending on their size and habitat, they may prey on insects, small mammals, birds, even fish. Some larger owl species can hunt and feed on animals as substantial as cats, small dogs, or deer fawns. While owls are pretty indiscriminate about what they eat, they can't actually digest fur and bones. But to deal with this, they form pellets in their stomach containing these undigested parts that they will later regurgitate. Gross, eh? But by studying these owl pellets, we can get a valuable insight into their diet and their ecosystems. You can do this yourself if you didn't know. You can actually just buy owl pellets on Amazon that you can just pick apart yourself if you're curious and don't mind playing with owl puke. It might be interesting. You might get cool little tiny bones. But let's back up a bit and talk about how they hunt. We covered the eyes and their night vision. That's obviously a huge asset, but did you know they have super hearing too? Their facial discs, the collection of feathers around their face that give them the distinctive owl look, act as a parabola and help funnel and amplify sound directly to their ears. Kind of like our oracle or pinna, you know, these things here, but way better. With ears on either side of our head, we can hear in stereo. A sound from my right will hit my right ear a fraction of the second before my left. It is imperceptible at a conscious level, but our brain can use this variance to tell us what direction sound is coming from. This applies to pretty much anything with ears, even peat and cats, so it's not that unusual. But owls take things just a little farther. While most of us have symmetrical ears, same place on either side of our heads, owls have asymmetrical ears, with one being lower than the other. This means that not only can they detect where sound is coming from, 
left to right, but the same principle is at play to better identify sound up and down. This asymmetry allows owls to pinpoint the exact location of a sound, even in complete darkness or under deep cover, like, for example, a mouse scuttling under the snow. But owls aren't the only ones with super senses. A lot of their prey do too. But before we get into how owls overcome that, I need to tell you about my list of who's who of awesome folks who support my channel, my friends on Patreon. Jumping from topic to topic with longish videos like owls to how snakes eat to glow in the dark bones to April Fool's parodies to how to build an enclosure does not make the YouTube algorithm all that happy. Broadly speaking, YouTube likes creators to make simple, similar, and shorter and predictable topics that have very broad appeal. My stuff and most reptile channels don't really fall into that and are much more niche -y. So it's thanks to these folks I can keep making the type of videos I like to make and presumably you like to watch. My patrons get some extra content too, additional bloopers if I have them, behind the scenes stuff, updates. For example, my patrons know that I recently had to take my owl to the vet because he was suffering from seasonal allergies. To add your support, please check out patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl. Also, if it's not too much trouble, please hit that like button if you did like the video. If you didn't like this video, you can hit the dislike button twice, just so I really know how you feel. Also, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe if you like what I'm doing and you want to see more. And I guess if you didn't like what I'm doing, well, subscribe ironically, cause that'll really show me. Okay, back at it. Thank you for putting up with my owl puns too. Where was I? Oh, right. Owls aren't the only ones with super senses. A lot of their prey do too. Prey animals need excellent hearing to detect predators and many have great eyesight day or night as well. Most prey animals have eyes to the side of their head instead of pointing forward. It doesn't give them great depth perception, but it gives them a much wider horizontal field of view to see if danger is approaching. Owls avoid this challenge by one, hunting at night when they have a greater advantage, and two, striking from the air, swooping down and grabbing their unsuspecting prey in a very sharp and unwelcome massage. Now imagine I have talons doing that. You do have talons. And talons. This is a great strategy and one that many birds of prey employ, but no one does it with as much ninja-like stealth as an owl. In a nutshell, owls are essentially flying with a built-in stealth mode. Birds fly by generating lift with their wings. As they flap their wings, they move a lot of air, which creates turbulence and sound. Let's cut the background music for a second here. Thank you. And we'll have a listen to some sounds of birds in flight. Here's a pigeon. Their relatively large body and smallish wings means that they need to do a lot of energetic flapping to stay aloft. Okay, how about a bird with bigger wings like a peregrine falcon? The fastest animal on the planet, by the way, if you didn't know. Okay, much quieter. They have much bigger and more efficient wings, so they can generate more lift and speed with less turbulence and sound. Not bad. All right, now let's, now let's hear a barn owl's flight. Did you hear it? No, of course not. I played no audio there whatsoever. And do you know why I didn't play any audio there? Because it doesn't matter. It, no consequence. Here's the actual clip of an owl flying. No different, right? In case you think I pulled a sneaky on you and muted the audio, how dare you not trust me after all this time, here's a clip from a BBC documentary showing the actual waveform of the audio. But with the barn owl, there's almost nothing. Yeah. Even our array of super sensitive microphones fail to pick up any sound of Kenza in flight. Pretty wild, right? They're so quiet, it's insane. A link to that video is below, by the way, if you still don't believe me. I kind of get it, but mm. By having much bigger wings and a smaller body, owls need to flap less and silently glide more. But when they do flap, it's still darn near silent. How? 
It all boils down to their feathers. First up, their wing feathers have a velvety texture, almost like a plush carpet for the air. So luxurious. The leading edges of those primary feathers have tiny serrated edges, like the teeth of a comb. And when the air passes over these velvety pointy surfaces, the airflow is disrupted, scattered, and absorbed by all the extra surface area minimizing the noise caused by the turbulence. You ever see those super soundproof rooms with like all the spiky bits on the wall? It's like that, but teeny tiny and on feathers. It's like they kind of have built-in noise cancellation technology. Who knew? You've used that pun before. Okay, I'll think of another one. Oh, it's like magic. They're Houdini. Okay, yeah, that's the one. I like it. Good job. Thanks. Oh, you're doing owl right today. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So that's it for today. I hope you liked learning a bit about owls on this superb owl weekend. The next time you don't hear a whoosh in the night, it might just be an owl honing its stealthy skills for the next Owl Olympics. Thanks to you all for watching and putting up with these jokes. Please let me know if you want me to do any more feathery content. I would love to. Tell me your favorite awful owl puns in the comments below. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. We're not going over to the table. We're not going over to the table. What did I say? You lost the tree. What are we going to do for this thumbnail? I think this is going to be like a football theme. An owl, but replace the yeah. owl's head with a football. Or you have an owl with a football jersey on or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because it goes the super, Wait, the wait, wait, the, wait. Okay. Football. On its end. So it's up in the air th like this. Yeah. And dress it like Owl that. head. Yeah. On top of it. Football body. Owl head. With okay. wings. Mm. And claws. Mm. Dead mouse. Well, no. I just word associated. No? Okay. <laughs>